Mi canción DJ, por favor, tócala una y otra vez y otra vez. Y yeah. Watch me take it up, then I break it down. I don't play sports, but it's a touchdown. I don't blend in, I'm a black sheep. And even then, they still follow me. I walk the waist rock, you throw a check my closet. They never show the guac, you throw a check my wallet. I'm a comet, head of this planet. Sitting on the throne and these haters can't stand it. So that was Becky G's, um, play it again in Spanish. Um, I actually really, really like that song. That one's really good. But, um, so, in the last chapter, in chapter 5, there's no chapter 6 for some crazy, odd, weird reason. So, I'm gonna have to redo, um, one of these channel things. Technically, well, actually, I might just do this. Alright, I don't know where chapter 6 is, um, I couldn't even begin to tell you where I think it is, but whatever. I won't get into, I won't get in touch with Smile Beautiful 1, 2, 3. Oh, by the way, that's the one who wrote the story, and if you guys want to read along, you guys can click the link in the description box. So, in the last chapter, apparently not, apparently Liam, apparently got to school late, so Niall ran to the janitor's closet, and so on and so forth. And then, apparently, he decided to leave school even though school wasn't over, and went home because he needed some time to himself to think about something. And then apparently he talked to his mom and told her that he might be bisexual. But, um, and he's gonna talk to Niall, but he said, he, I'm gonna go to, I'm going to go to Nando's tonight to talk to Niall. Chapter 7. Niall's point of view. I was sitting in biology, biting on my pencil, doing my work when the piece of paper hit my head. I looked over and it land I looked I looked at it, it landed on my desk. I looked back and see Liam. Open it, he mouthed to me and nod before flattening out the crumpled piece of paper. Reading it. Party at my friend Zane's night, you in? I read it and sighed. Maybe I should let loose a bit. I need to relieve some stress. I turned around giving him a smile. I nodded and gave me the thumbs up. I laughed a little. Mr. Horn, has something to share with the class, Mr. Roberts? My biology teacher said and my eyes, all eyes were on me, then I blushed and sucked down my seat. No, sir, I said. No, madam. I said, she crossed her arms and nodded. Don't interrupt again or you, or see me after class. She said, and I nodded slowly. I'm sorry, ma'am. It was my fault. Liam said, making me turn around, give him what the fuck look. He gave me a sympathetic look and shrugged. Well, I would advise you not to distract my other students, she said. And he nodded as he turned, as she turned back to the board. Alright, class, 
Once class was out, I gathered all my things and hurried out of the room to avoid Ollie seeing me in the halls. Niall, hold up, mate. I heard Liam say behind me as I held my books close to my chest. I turned around as he caught up. I looked around nervously. Liam, what? I said. He wrapped his arms around my shoulders and started to walk. I'm going to pick you up for the party tonight around 7.30ish. Is that alright? He asked. I nodded. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, I said. Quit being so nervous, Niall. He said, and I, and I sighed, stopping our walking, and stood in front of him. I put a hand on his chest and made him stop walking. You know, you know how hard, you know how hard that is to do when you've been bullied by the same person for years. You just, you just have to stop it completely. I just have to get used to that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be nervous. I said, looking up at him, taking my hand away. He looked down and pressed his lips onto a line. I understand. He he said, and I said, I'm sorry. I'm just scared that that you're gonna leave me like everyone else. That he asked. I shook my head and sighed once again. Nothing. Just forget it. I'm gonna be late for class. I said, turning on my heel and walking down the hall quickly. I made it to my last class, English, with some spare time, so I took up my phone and texted Harry to Hayes. Hey, I can't believe this. I'm falling for him. Falling too deep. I sent it and put my phone back in my pocket right before Mr. Buke walked in. I couldn't pay attention at all because my mind kept drifting to Liam and his perfect hair and brown eyes. How his lips part a little when he's thinking. Just everything, and I jumped a mile when the bell rang. Everyone gave me a weird look. I blushed and quickly gathered my things, hanging at the door. I was surprised. What surprised me was right outside the classroom. Harry was leaning up against the locker, and as all these girls were flirt, flirtation, smiling and giggling at him when he waved, but no one was interested in them. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be with Louis? I asked. Yeah, but I got your text and figured you may need someone to talk to. Paul gave me and you the day off. So we can go back to my flat. He said, taking my hand and pulling me out the school door. He pulled me out of the car that I've never seen before. What happened to your old car? Why did you guys get a silver minivan? I asked. Well, my other car had two seats in it plus. And plus, I do have triplets on the way, so so I need a big car. He said, and I'm not understanding. Ah, ah, I see. I said, and he nodded and pulled out of the parking space he was in. Then we got on the line of cars that were leaving. So, talk to me, he said, making me sigh. That's, there's no, there's really nothing to talk about. I'm just falling for a guy that I just realized, that, that just realized my existence last week. I don't know what to do, I said, and he nodded, taking, not taking his eyes off the road. Once he pulled out of the lot. You know, me and Louie were like you and Le like Liam and yourself. Met in our third year of high school and we were only best friends, but... What we didn't know each other... What? What we didn't know was each other of us falling for the other and hard. We ended up together and we needed help on a pro- And we needed help on a project. We- When he came over. We stayed up until about 3 in the morning doing it, and I couldn't help but sit close to him. I ended up leaning and kissing, and we kissed. Now we're getting married, and we're having kids, he said, with a smile on his face the whole time we talked about it. Yeah, I don't think it'll be easy for me, Hayes, but I'm going to a party with him tonight. He's picking me up around 7.30 at my place, I said. Really? Louis want... Really? Louis will want to pick out your outfit for that. I hope you know. And I won't argue with 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 a three almost four month pregnant man. And I I would just do what he as he says. He warned me. I la I me laughing softly and nodding. You got a point there, whatever. I wanna look good tonight, I said. And he nodded. Well we'll make you look hot, don't worry, he said, and nodded and laughed a bit. Once we were at his flat, we walked in. Louis was eating a bowl of ice cream, sitting on the couch with his legs crossed, and it showed it, his bump. 
and me, me being me, couldn't help but coo at it as he rolled his eyes. Yeah, yeah, it's cute. Now what's going on again? Now what's going on again? He asked. Our little guy Niall here is going to a party tonight. We gotta make him look good, Harry said, looking over, looking over at me with a smirk. I see. Follow me, Louis said, getting up carefully and resting a hand on his stomach and walking up to his and Harry's bedroom. He went to the closet and opened it. We went through it. He went through it before pulling out some black skinny jeans and a white button-up shirt. Put this on. It should fit you. He said, and I nodded before going to the bathroom and putting it on. When I walked out, I did a 360 so he could see them on me. Then Louis walked over and fixed my collar and my shirt. Now let's do something about your about that hair of yours. He said, hey, my hair is gorgeous, I said, cheeky. Yeah, I know, but we gotta do something with it. Come here. He said, gesturing me to the bathroom. I walked in after him and put, he put the cover to the toilet down and told me to sit. He took out some hair products and put it in my hair and made a face, and Harry took some pictures, laughing at each one. After a while of fixing my hair, he blow-dried it, it a bit and then fixed some out-of-place hairs, then he smiled. There, what do you think? He asked, making me stand up and look in the mirror. Wow, I look different, I said. He made my hair into uh, a quiff, and it showed off my brown roots. It looked really good if I do say something. We're not done. Give me your glasses, he said. Lou, you know I can't see without them. Yes, I do. That's why Harry and I bought you contacts. Now, it says me and Harry, but as you guys know, I'm a huge grammar person, and it should be Harry and I. But you contacts these some eyes one. You guys should not be spending money on me, I said. I said, and Louis rolled his eyes. You'll put them in and like it. He said, slightly annoyed. I put my hands up and surrender, and I nodded. Good boy, now here, put them in. He said, I sighed before taking off my still crack glasses, putting the contacts in, and looking myself in the mirror, smiling. I look great. You guys are literally the best, I said. Also, now, I went out and bought you some new high-top sneakers. It looks like you needed them. Harry said, I groaned as he held out a white hot tie, white high tops to me. I took off my old gross black ones I had on before, putting on the new ones. I looked up at them as Harry wrapped his arms around Louis's waist from behind and admired his work. I said, you did a good job. I did a good job, Harry. Louis asked, turning his head a bit to look at him. You did amazing, babe, he said, smiling and kissing his cheek. Yeah, well, it's 7 o'clock. He'll be picking... And he'll be picking you, me up at 7.30. Can you drive me home, Harry? I asked, as he nodded. Let's go get your man. Once I got home, my dad was out once again, and it was 7.15. Good luck, me. Nine. Harry called as he walked up the pathway to my house. Thanks for the ride, Harry. See you tomorrow. I called back at nine before rolling up the car window, driving away as I got inside. I was surprised that the house actually was actually a bit clean. I guess my dad is finding some help. I heard a honk in the horn ten minutes later. I smiled to myself, grabbed my phone before walking outside. I got in Liam's car and he looked at me with his mouth slightly ajar. Wow, Nye, you clean up good. He asked, making me smile. Making me smile and laugh lightly. Thanks. You don't look bad yourself there, Lee. I said, as I saw he was wearing jeans and a plaid shirt. Thanks, right, the party? He asked. He asked as we drove, on, drove away, and I nodded. Of course, I said with a smile playing on my lips. After a few minutes of driving, we got to a huge house. You could hear the blast of music pounding through the ground from outside. I noticed that there were probably already drunk outside on the front lawn. Where's Zane's parents, I asked, as we unbuckled and got out. They both went on a business trip for a week, he said, and I nodded and we walked inside. There were a few girls there who noticed me and winked and I blushed as I walked behind Liam. I smiled a bit as they giggled, but one mumbled out of he mumbled to the others, he's cute. Hey, Liam and Niall, right? Zane asked, walking over to us with some drinks. Yeah, that's me, I said. Glad you two can make it here, he said, handing me a drink. Oh, um, I don't drink, I said. Oh, come on, I... Just live a little. Liam said, taking a sip from his. I sighed before taking a sip, and it actually wasn't bad. A few drinks later, I was a giggling mess. I was swaying on my feet and giggling with Liam. 
And we were both drunk messes. Lee, guess what? I yelled over the line music. What night? I'm drunk. I yelled and we both fell to the floor giggling and messes. I am too. That's so weird. He said, making me laugh harder. I have something to tell you, Liam. I said, getting close to the face. What is it? He asked me. I love you. I said before I start to giggle again. I love you too, he said, laughing. I don't know why, but the next thing I knew, we were laying on the floor making out. He was on top of me and ran ran his tongue along my bottom lip, and I opened my mouth, allowing him entrance. Our tongue danced softly. Then he picked me up and wrapped my legs around his waist. My hands went to his hair and went to his thighs as he held me up, bringing us to a random room. The rest of the night was a blur. Oh, so. Ooh, now get it in! <laughs> it's 1.30 in the morning over here, and I, and I can't sleep. Anyways, how do you like the story so far? Like it? Love it? I hope you like it, because I'm, because I really like writing this. Thanks, you guys. So, yeah. What, are you guys happy that Diane and Liam finally said that they love each other? Do you think they only said that because they're drunk? Ow. God, I'm tired. But I've read the story already, so I already know kind of what happens. But, um... Yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Until next time, gaze, okay? Just ask the GSA. Mwah!